Stick around till the end to learn about the sponsor of today's video, Protopie. A lot of people ask me how to get better at UI design, and my answer is always the same. Practice, practice, practice. So today I'm gonna go through an exercise that I'd recommend to anyone hoping to improve their UI design skills. I'm just gonna grab a random screen off the internet. This happens to be a screen design that one of my subscribers sent me. I'm gonna pop it right into Figma and then we're gonna walk through how we can make it better. Before we dive in, I actually wanted to let you know that you can access this Figma file that I'm going to be designing in. I'll link it below for you. So instead of having to search for your own screen to redesign, I have already taken this screen and actually recreated it in Figma. So you don't have to do any of that work if you wanna get some practice in. I'll be sharing this file in the description box. Okay, so let's see what we're working with here. So the first thing that I noticed when I was recreating this based off of this screenshot is that this size doesn't really match up with any phone size. It was very strange. So my rule of thumb is I like to design in a very, you know, new modern iPhone size. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. So I've just created a new little frame here in Figma. Another thing I wanted to mention is that I don't fully understand what this app is for. So we're going to ignore that. We're literally just talking about layout here, colors, typography, um, and the UI. So don't worry too much about, okay, what even is this? What should I be able to do? That's UX. We're focusing only on UI. Okay. Other thing that I noticed is that there's a lot of inconsistency with these icons. For example, these look really sharp to me. They have these sharp edges. Um, these edges are even kind of squared off, whereas this is nice and rounded. So we want to maintain um, consistency with the icons. Um, okay, so before I kind of dive any deeper, let's just get started redesigning this. So really all I'm going to do is start to copy and paste elements over and then we'll start to mess with them. So for example, SF Pro Rounded. I'm just not a huge fan of this font. I think something like this was really popular like 10 years ago. So I'm just going to go with SF Pro in general. So we're going to center that, center it on our frame. And already I just think that looks a little bit more modern and less kind of like cheesy. I don't know. But I am just going to put it in all caps to make it a little look a little more like a logo if that makes sense. Okay. Anyway, let's take this icon as well. So this is my profile icon. Um, and let's just see here. It's a good 20 pixels away from the edge. So that's what we're going to maintain um, this whole time. So if you wanted to, you could add some rulers here. But to be honest, these just kind of get in my way of seeing how a layout feels. So I'm just not going to do that, but you are more than welcome to do that if you want. Let's grab these elements and bring them over. I'm not loving this shadow at all. I actually like to keep my shadows around 10%. And then the thing that really helps is to increase that blur. So I'm just going to put it at 20. And again, I'm not loving how this color looks against white. So what I'm actually going to do is make this white and make the background color of our whole UI a light gray. So something like this should be good. And then so that we can kind of see it, I'm actually going to increase the background color of Figma for a minute. Okay, this is already looking a lot more natural. Change this to SF Pro. This is 16 pixels, which is plenty big. I don't mind that. Um, let's actually though, since so that this looks more like a pill or a switch, um, let's actually make the fill this same color and then we'll make the text white. Let's make this that blue as well. It's gonna be a lot easier to read. This switch seems too long to me. Yeah, 
so make it a bit smaller and then we will center that already looking better let's grab these icons now since we've got i'm looking at the rest of the icons and i think the majority of them are nice and rounded so i think i'd like to change these um mostly these three to be more rounded so i'm just going to go into my plugins icon sacks and we're going to look for cart i don't really know what this is supposed to be to be honest video then i am going to make these that color and we're just going to replace them okay now let's do this search bar and this should probably be white as well and we'll make this the blue maybe we can give this a bit of a stroke would it look better with the stroke or would it look better with that drop shadow that we did before yeah i think matching with the drop shadow works better so i'm gonna do that instead and we might be able to round this out just by selecting those and then going to rounded and round round there we go so we didn't even look need to look for a new icon we can just round the stroke with that i'm not really sure about these two things next to each other and exactly what they're supposed to be but actually now looking at this from a ux and ui perspective it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have two completely different treatments here this one looks separate while this one looks like it should be part of this so i'm actually going to get rid of that we're going to make this the blue I'm going to make this the blue as well okay after looking at this for a while i'm going to move these icons up here and because I'm assuming that this actually doesn't have so much to do with the search as it does um, like other actions that I can take. This I think needs to actually be smaller in comparison to the search hierarchically. What's more important? The search. Okay, so that's not bad. And then these can definitely be a bit smaller but they do need 44 pixels of tappable space around them. And maybe we can make these to make these a different color, like a little bit lighter because they're conflicting right now with the rest of this iconography. Now let's grab this element here. We can make this feel more consistent just by giving it rounded corners and edges let's give this a good 40 pixels of space so now i can tell from looking here that this is like the expanded um view and these are the collapsed views so when you click on these categories they expand and show all of these so i'm going to bring all of this over too because I think we need to tackle it all together. So one thing I'm already not liking is how squished this and this is. Um, so that's not cool. I am gonna think a little bit from a UX perspective for this one. If someone opens this or expands it, they already wanna see all. You shouldn't have to act twice, press two different things to see everything that there is to see right so instead of this horizontal scroll i'm gonna get rid of this and this spread these out evenly so to do that we're just going to group them all together select them all and then do distribute horizontal spacing we're gonna give it another row of maybe three and that is actually showing them all and so then you have these that are closed and the others that are open. The thing I'm a bit thrown off by is I don't feel like these are really grouped together. So now what I actually wanna do is change this state to look a little bit different. So thinking what if we had like a bit of a background color here? So definitely not this dark, but I'm picturing actually even it could be white so 
then we can just, and then let's give this that shadow as well. Cool, and then we can move this down. 16 pixels in between these is good. So now let's give these a little bit more space. So maybe 10 pixels on the top and the sides. 10 pixels here too. These are still maybe too small. Mm, I know what we can do. What if we actually made this a three across grid? So let's have this be 60 pixels high and then let's instead do, so let's do 100. And I think I actually wanna do 15 pixels of padding. We can actually make this wider so that when we make it 12 pixels there is still room okay as i'm looking at this one thing is bothering me so i don't actually like how this is popping out in the same way as this so i'm actually going to get rid of this shadow and make this like just a bit darker i think that makes a bit more sense to me because it feels like an actual switch versus something that's like sticking out and that makes this feel more prominent which i think is important i do like these icons but i feel like this needs to be a bit taller yeah normally when i'm designing i'll make this between 64 and 68 pixels um so we'll make it 64 it was close but i just think it could be a little bit better I think I want to make it a little bit more obvious which tab we are currently on. So I'm going to do one of these little indicator dots. I want to mention that making this background gray really helped us out on a lot of fronts because another thing I didn't like was that this tab bar is white and it's over top of a white background. So yes, this shadow helps you know that it's in the foreground, but I think it's even better if we can have a little bit of contrast. I don't love on this version how it's just touching the tab bar. I am going to align it there and then do 12 and 12. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, and one more thing I'm noticing, this is kind of how I do this exercise, guys. Like I am kind of seeing what catches my eye and going from there. So something that just caught my eye is this blue text. So what we wanna do is reserve the blue text or the brand color text for something that is um, interactive. So, you know, for example, this switch, these icons, things like that. Um, but this, while it is interactive, it's text that's going to be typed out and it's also prompting text. So I think I actually want to make this dark gray just to make it super clear that it's not like a link or anything like that. Um, and then one other thing that I'm noticing is that this um, magnifying glass is super, super light while the stroke in a lot of these other um, icons is a lot thicker. So I'm just going to go in here, give this a stroke. And so that's looking more in line. Maybe it's actually too much. So we'll just do 0.5. And then also I'm just going to try to make this a bit shorter. Let's see if that works. Yeah, I think that just looks more natural to me. We'll make it a bit smaller. Okay, so what do you guys think? This is the before, and this is the after. Please let me know in the comments if you liked this exercise and if you would want me to do more of these or even make like a Figma worksheet with tons and tons of these for you to practice with and kind of watch me do it and design along with me. If that's something that a lot of people are interested in, I definitely can create that for you guys. So let me know. If you like this video, you might want to check out my full design with me playlist. But before we wrap up, I do want to talk to you guys about the sponsor of today's video, Protopie. 
ProtoPie is a powerful prototyping tool that allows designers to create realistic, sophisticated prototypes without writing a single line of code. With ProtoPie, you can easily create complex transitions, animations, and interactions that mimic real-world behavior using native device sensors such as keyboards, cameras, microphones, and more. Guys, UI is not just for computers and phones anymore. Prototyping for automobiles, smartwatches, TVs, and and games is so critical these days and ProtoPie makes it possible. The best part, in my opinion, is that their plugins make it really easy to bring existing designs from Figma XD or Sketch into ProtoPie so you're not doubling up on work, which is honestly my biggest pet peeve when I've used programs like this in the past. You can get started in ProtoPie for free, but if you do want to upgrade to a pro plan, I have an awesome discount code to get you 30% off, so make sure to use that at checkout. Out, I will leave it linked below. If you want to get into this type of prototyping but you don't know where to start, ProtoPie actually has awesome free learning content inside their ProtoPie school. So I'll leave that link below too and definitely let me know in the comments if you're interested in ProtoPie, if you check it out, or if you want to see me do any ProtoPie related videos here on my channel. Thanks so much to ProtoPie for sponsoring today's video and to you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye!